The last thing we need to do to finish up this part is to uh, create the chamfering operation that goes around this edge right here at the top of the part. It's, it's actually really easy to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to select this face right here and make sure that we have sub element and highlight turned on. If we have sub element and highlight turned on, we're going to click right on this face. It's going to ask us, is this the face that we wanted? We, we want that face, but we're going to hold down the shift key when we left click and tell it yes. And what it's going to do is it's going to select all of the faces that go around there. And that's not what we wanted to do. Okay. Right about 50 seconds here. We're going to start again. The last thing that we need to do in order to finish up this part is to actually create the chamfering operation that goes around the edge here. So what we're going to do is we want to select the loop or the, that goes right around this top edge. To do that, make sure you have sub element and highlight turned on and then zoom in a little bit and click right here. And it's going to say, do we want that edge? And I'm going to say, well, no, I don't want that edge because I want the loop that goes around the whole part. So I'm going to right click and say no. It's going to say, do you want that loop? And no, I don't want the loop that defines that face of the chamfer. I want the loop that goes around the whole part. So I'm going to right click again and it's going to actually ask me, do I want that loop? And that's the one I want. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes to this by left clicking. We've selected that right there. Now we're going to go to our create features toolbar. We're going to go to the auto chain button on the create features toolbar and click it. What it does is it creates this chain right here that defines that chamfer along the edge. Now I'm going to go rename that chain, rename chamfer. And that way I won't lose it and get confused about other chains. So we want to have that chamfer chain selected. When we have that selected, what we're able to do is go to our solid mill traditional toolbar again. We're going to find that contouring operation again, just like we used in the, in the last operation. Select that. And so instead of using our 3 8 inch end mill this time, we're going to go ahead and select our 3 8 inch chamfer mill. And so we select that. Now we need to, uh, to double check our feeds and speeds. We can do that on our feeds and speeds chart here. So the, uh, and again, we call this a drill mill or a chamfer mill here. And uh, so I've got the speed and feed chart from the MFE Labs website open. If we go down here, we can go up to 650 surface feet per minute at three inches per tooth and three inches per tooth. So. 6,000 RPM gets us almost to 650, three and three. So we're good to go with feeds and speeds on this tool. On the strategy tab, we, uh, we don't need to do 10 passes. In fact, one pass is gonna be good enough for us. So we go ahead and change that to one. Finish pass, no, we're gonna leave that out. We wanna climb mill, no need to alternate. Process order depth doesn't matter. No spiral. Make sure you don't select spiral. If you select spiral, it'll actually go around the part twice and we only need to go around the part once. Uh, stock allowance zero. Total depth. Now we don't want to go 0.35 inches down. Actually 50 thousandths, 0 0.050 will do just fine for our depth on this one. We come down to the uh, the compensations and we see offset side computer is left. So that looks good because we're going to come around the part in the uh, in the clockwise motion here. The tool is going to be spinning clockwise. Climb milling will pull the tool into the workpiece as it goes around. So that's good. Uh, offset tool radius, yes. Offset cutter comp, we're going to make sure that that is off. There's nothing to worry about in the advanced tab for this operation. And on the links tab, we're not going to worry about this unless it crashes during the simulation. Um, and then we might have to visit that. Okay, so I'm going to say okay. It creates my operation. And when I select the operation though, I can see that the entry move is inside the part here. And that's not what we wanted. So, so if we go back to our contouring operation and take a look at it again, it's actually, we need to look at this offset side on the computer. And so left is what we want, but that left is based on the direction of the arrow. So if you were sitting on the arrow that defines the chain, 
left is inside for this arrow direction. What we want to do is we want to reverse that. So I'm going to cancel right now out of this. I'm going to go to my create and edit features toolbar. On that toolbar, we've got a uh, reverse here. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to click on the chain that defines the chamfer. And, uh, and that's going to now point the arrow in the other direction. Once I've done that, we're not quite done yet. We've got to go back to our contouring operation, right click, go to machining and go to rebuild. And now it moves that contouring operation so that it cut starts on the outside of the workpiece. Now let's go ahead and run that simulation. And so now it looks like we have a finished part. So we've done this, this half of the part. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually have to flip this over and we're gonna do the machining operations on the other side. But that got us through this half of the part.